Okay, so let's start with the important bit here. Um, first things first, I hope everyone's well. You know, we're in a difficult, very strange times. Um, there's a little certainty. Um, everything seems to be very different. Um, working from homes. Um, but yeah, for those who know me, um, I guess here's, here's a little bit of uh, life carrying on as usual. And I'm going to ramble on about brand for a while. So um, yeah, here's to, here's to some, a little bit of a few minutes of, uh, I guess, normality. Um, whether it's interesting or not, you know, who knows. But uh, anyway, um, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, working with brand as a strategy director and someone who works with brand on a daily basis. Um, just thought I'd share a couple of ideas about how um, to maybe to better work with brand and primarily to better work with brand by better understanding um, what brand is. So it really isn't about um, you know models, structures, pyramids, um, onions, all the things that we're told we need to use to work with brand, and they're all very useful, obviously, they can be, um, and I use them quite a lot. But what I wanted to talk about a bit more was um, a couple of ideas about how to think about brand or things that I've kind of come to think about brand in this way over the years. So, two ideas. Um, or two kind of ways of thinking. Um, first one is uh, for those of us who work with brand, I'd say that we need to accept that there is a paradox at the heart of brand. So, okay, what do I mean? Um, you know, we have these common uh, and regular discussions of what is brand, what isn't brand. Um, arguments of whether brand is um, all about identity um, or whether brand is all about meaning um, and people will generally sit on one side or the other and, but I mean I think we kind of know it's, it's both um, and so brand is the identity so by that let's say these are kind of the spatial elements these elements that allow us to interact with the brand at uh, moments in time. So the, the assets, the codes, um, you know, things like logos, typeface, colors, you know, key attributes, visual, or it could be audio, or it could be smells. Um, but really these are the kind of spatial elements that um, I guess give the brand form. Um, but then again, the brand is also the meaning. So the meaning we associate with these spatial elements. Um, so what they mean to us, what they might mean to other people, what we would like them to mean. Um, and this changes over time. Um, and it will change over depending on the context of um, where you're at and where each person's at. Um, but simply a brand um, couldn't exist without either one of these. Um, so meaning on the one hand and identity on the other hand. Um, so a brand is simultaneously both of these things. A brand has to be simultaneously uh, spatial in terms of the, the things and temporal in terms of the ideas or the meaning. So in this way of thinking, we're, we're not denying one or the other. We're not giving one or the other pr prominence. Um, we're saying that actually they can't work without each other. So, you know, we, the, this kind of paradox of things that should be conflicting, actually, it's not a conflict. Um, they both exist in parallel. So the idea that a brand is um, proprietary, it's true, 
there are the kind of spatial elements, the things like logos, and you know you need to protect, and that you can own. Um, but then when you talk about the other part of the brand, the meaning, you know, you you cannot, you can't tell something, uh, you can't tell someone what something means. Um, so the meaning is something that you have to share. That has to be um, formed and reformed constantly. Um, so I guess on the one hand you have um, something you can own. On the other hand, something you have to share. The spatial, the temporal. So it's these um, two uh, parts of brand that should seem to be in, in contradiction, but actually they're not at all. Um, you know, we know that obviously a meaning will evolve over time. What something means, what something means to the same person will mean different, uh, what, what a brand means to the same person will mean different things at different times of their life. But then again, in the same point in time, a brand will mean a multitude of different things to different people. Um, but even the kind of spatial elements will change over time. We know identities get redesigned, elements are constantly added, updated. Um, so even these kind of sim seemingly um, uh, permanent um, elements aren't permanent at all. They're, they're kind of moments in time that, uh, that are created to, um, to work for the brand at that time, but then they will, they will change. Um, people leading brands, you know, were kind of obsessed with this idea of, of control. Um, You've got to control the brand, control the message, control the experience. Um, really, when it comes to kind of the idea of total control, you know, we've only ever really had an illusion of control. Um, that's not to say that we shouldn't constantly be trying to control messages. Um, we just have to accept that we can never be fully in control of our brand as it's someone leading the brand. You have to be constantly um, shaping and reshaping what that brand, particularly what that brand means. So that's kind of one way of thinking, this idea of like a paradox, the paradox of brand. Um, the second thing that I was kind of wanting to share is that, um, so quite a few years ago now, um, I um, f discovered this kind of Japanese philosophy of Wabi Sabi, and Wabi Sabi has become increasingly popular um, for a number of reasons, but essentially it's a Japanese worldview centered on the acceptance of transience and imperfection. Um, so the idea of Wabi Sabi, very much based on nature, is that everything is either coming into or going out of being. So some, everything is being kind of, um, is either evolving um, out of from nothing or is devolving into nothing. Um, <clears throat> this idea that um, things are always in process. And this is when I kind of started learning more and more about Wabi Sabi. I mean, there's this not wanting to kind of um, sully a, a kind of Japanese philosophy that's been around for a very, very long time with, with this kind of a, capitalist um, brand but it, there, I saw many parallels with with a brand um, and this was at a time when brands were very much considered as um, static and you know you kind of create the brand and put it out there and then you a few years later you're like oh this isn't working and you have to rebrand and put it out there again and tell people this. you know whereas in reality um, you know, the, the same is true for brand in terms of Wabi Sabi. The same is true that it's constantly in process. It's a, a, a case of constantly managing something. Um, and this is actually why, in my opinion, um, the term that is often used of building brands or brand building, you know, it's a very misleading phrase. Um, because Building, you know, a brand is not a built object. A brand is not a, a static object that is built and then added to and added to and added to. Um, you know, people who work with brand, you understand that much of working with brand 
is managing or arresting decline or disintegration or you know problems or or um, you know uh, losing market share it's not constantly building and adding to um, but that kind of that's a bigger sort of bugbear of mine this building brand um, you know coming back to this idea of Wabi Sabi um, so Wabi Sabi has three core tenets um, and these are the ideas of imperfection of incompleteness and of impermanence um, and these are very, very powerful. And that, I guess initially they might seem very, um, a little bit negative, but actually, you know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about these ideas and they're actually really, really powerful. So firstly, imperfection. So working with your brand, except nothing is perfect. Your brand shouldn't be perfect. And actually you should embrace the idea of imperfection. Um, I think one of the best phrases I've heard on this is that perfection is a dead state. And this idea that um, if something is perfect, there is no room for improvement. It, the only way, I mean, there's, there is no possibility of change. Um, and that actually imperfection allows for evolution and for development. Um, so the idea of imperfection um, allows for growth, is dynamic, allows for energy, um, allows for um, experiment, experimentation. So imperfection is a very, very powerful idea. Um, and the second part of this is incomplete. So nothing is finished. And anyone who works with the brand understands this. You know, there is always more to do. Um, you know, your work is never done. Um, Brand is something that needs constantly managing and leading. Um, you know, this this idea um, that nothing's finished. It th there is really no end point to your brand. I mean, I guess the only time a brand ends is when it isn't even when a company goes bust, because there's plenty of companies who don't exist anymore in the brand still exists out there in people's minds and, and in, in conversation and and in culture. Um, I guess the only time a brand would end is is when everyone completely forgot about it. But, you know, if you're leading that brand, you hope that you're not around when that happens. Um, and the third, the third part of this is impermanence. So impermanence, nothing lasts. So there's a time for everything to end. Um, Everything has its time, and there is a time for everything to end. So whether that's accepting, you know, in simple terms, it's time for, oh, maybe that identity we designed five years ago isn't quite working anymore. Maybe it's this fantastic strategy that we had, isn't quite cutting it anymore, needs to rethink. Um, when the landscape in which your brand exists has shifted, then so too must your brand. So. You know, the idea of impermanence, the idea that everything ends, is really, really powerful. Um, so, yeah, those three core tenets of Wabi Sabi can be really, really powerful. At first they seem a little bit negative, but um, I'd argue that very strongly that they're not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was a couple of um, two things that really um, inform how I think about brand. I mean, how I work with brand is, is um, quite um, different and probably more, a lot more structured. But this, I think what I wanted to do with the talk is to, this talk is to encourage people to not just, not just follow kind of frameworks and plug things into frameworks and go, oh, I've found this new framework. I'm just going to use this one and plug in stuff. It's to actually think a bit more think about what brand is what why is it powerful how can I lead it um, so this isn't like a, you know, a how-to guide um, this is a, a short invitation and um, to think a bit more about what brand is how it works um, number one brand is a paradox simultaneously spatial and temporal it is meaning and identity um, they both coexist, they have to, 
Number two, the three tenets of Wabi Sabi. Nothing's perfect, nothing's finished, nothing lasts. Um, and that's it. Um, you know, I guess just to finish up, nothing lasts is kind of apt in our time we're in at the moment is, you know, in, in a, in a appreciation of the difficult time we're in now, we know that this kind of troubling time, it will come to an end. We will move out of this time. So I think, um, probably enough about, uh, from me of rambling on about brand. So, uh, if everyone keep well and, um, yeah, thanks very much.